Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you decide to watch this, you're seeing my face again. So this means it's time for Midtown Church at home again. Here I'm out here enjoying the Eagle Roost Outlook in Pierre Marquette Park in Illinois, somewhere far away from my house. I thought to myself, let's just go ahead and record this opener. Now make sure that you follow us on all of our social media. That's Facebook, Instagram, and also on the church website. Jordan, throw the graphic up there because I can't remember all of that. (laughs) But now let me ask you a question. Have you ever taken time to ask Siri like, hey, um, how do I do this? Well, today, Pastor Jeff is kicking off a brand new series called How To. So you don't have to ask Siri to get these things done. We can find the answers ourselves. Let's dive into this. Pastor Jeff, take it away. Welcome Midtown Church at Home. I hope you're having a great day. I cannot wait to share with you in just a few minutes something that God has really downloaded in my heart that I just want to I just want to whisper to you. I just want to talk about it because um, I, I just I really love talking about practical things. You know, let me let me take a TV time out for a minute and just say uh, we are pumped that you're hanging out with us here at Midtown Church at Home just for the next few minutes. So before we even get started, let's do something. Go ahead right now and just share this link. Um, you can you can uh, tell your ugly uncle about this, maybe your aunt that you don't like, send it to your mom, send it to somebody, but go ahead right now in the, in the comments, in the chat, just give us some thumbs up, throw us some hearts, uh, throw up the 100 because We are pumped this morning to start a new series, but we're just simply pumped because you're here to hang out with us. Now, here's the deal. At Midtown Church, we are a bunch of people who are imperfect, but we have the opportunity to serve an incredible God. How do I know that? Because I'm standing here today. Because if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for his grace, if it wasn't for his mercy, then I can't even begin to tell you where I would be. Now, maybe some of you are a lot more perfect than I am, but the truth is, man, it has been grace after grace after grace and mercy after mercy that he has shown me, and that's exactly what we want to do here at Midtown Church, because the truth is we just want to make the name of Jesus famous in everything that we do so that we can populate heaven right now. So, Go ahead and start sharing, liking, telling somebody hi. Go ahead in the chat, tell tell somebody uh, maybe across the state line or even in Africa, tell them hi, tell them how you're doing. Uh, I don't know if there's even a shake hand emoji, but right now let's, let's get started because I'm so pumped about the series that we're starting today. This new series that we're starting today, we just simply called it How To. Now, I, there's a lot of things and a lot of resources Um, whether it's in a book, whether it's online, whether it's just by word of mouth. There's a lot of ways that we have instructions in in manuals on how to do some things. And so this morning, let's just maybe look at this as kind of like the spiritual YouTube for the week, because we want to, in this how-to series, the purpose of this is just really to talk about practical things in a messed up society. We just want to help people because it's helped me this week to really just sit down and really think about how to do some things in this fast paced, messed up, crazy, um, chaotic society sometimes. And so this morning, here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how to be generous when you're broke. Now, go ahead right now in the chat and just throw a hand up if you can say, you know what? I'm a little bit on the broke side of the spectrum. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Here's here's two hands right here. So this morning, we're going to talk about how to be generous while being broke. 
Now, I know a lot of people. I just want to go ahead and, and, and pause right now. I said the word generous, which also translates and talks about giving. I just want to go ahead and right now just kind of ease everybody's mind because unfortunately, in the society that we live, Christians and church in general has done a terrible job and, and really misused this idea of giving. I, I just want to go ahead and tell you, we are not a televangelist. Uh, we are not some program on online or on the TV that we're going we're gonna to say, send us $77 and we're going to give you an ounce of miracle water and everything's going to be great. That's, that's garbage. I don't believe in it. You can send me an email, tell me I'm wrong, but that's horrible. That's called taking advantage of people's money and really misusing the name of Jesus and, and all that he has available for your life. But this morning, what I do want to do is this. I want to give us some practical, just simple practical ways. I just want to give us a few points on how we really can be generous while being broke. And I want to also say this, being generous just from the start does not just simply mean and doesn't stop at having money. So let's go ahead, get on your, get on your uh, smartphone, get open your Bible, get on your iPad, do whatever you need to do. We're going to read a few scriptures. I'm going to talk about a man named David, but I just simply want to read a few scriptures here just out of uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 29. If you, if you want to go ahead and flip there with me, um, I'm pulling it up right now on my Bible. All right. Now, it says this in, in chapter 29, verse 14. It says, but who am I and who are my people that we would give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you, and we give you only what you first gave us. We are here for only a moment, visitors and strangers in the land, as our ancestors were before us. Our days on earth are like a passing shadow gone so soon without a trace. O oh Lord our God, even this material we have gathered to build a temple to honor your holy name comes from you. It all belongs to you. Go ahead and highlight that. It all belongs to you. Verse 17 says, I know, my God, that you examine our hearts and rejoice when you find integrity there. You know I have done all this with good motives, and I have watched your people offer their gifts willingly and joyously or with joy. So this morning, here's what I just simply want to talk about from the very beginning. This idea that sometimes in life, whether it's because of circumstance, whether it's because of, uh, an, and you know, ultimately maybe a decision, sometimes we find ourselves in a state, in a mindset, in a lifestyle where maybe we are feeling a little bit broke. Now, I can remember uh, Brittany and I when we first got married, maybe like some of you, uh, we lived on fast food and ramen noodles. You ever been there? Now, I know that some of you are, are real big like health freaks and geeks. Now, don't be hating on me because I, I, I ate a lot of ramen noodles because when you're in college and you're married and you have a few bills to pay and you're trying to uh, support your, your brand new wife and make sure that she understands like you got her, like ramen noodles are uh, a, a great, great meal. Like it's five star almost sometimes. Listen, you can put a little pepper on those ramen noodles and it just changes everything. So don't be hating on the ramen noodle eater, okay? We had ramen noodles, we had uh, a few boxes of KFC and we made that last sometimes. Now, there were other times where your boy, I, I, I can get hungry and I found myself um, eating more sometimes than we really budgeted for. And so Brittany quickly reminded me, hey, Joker, you don't have to slow your roll because we don't have that much money. We are broke. We are brand new uh, uh, marriage people. We don't have a whole lot. You're going to have to slow your roll. And if that means you don't eat at 12 midnight, you don't have to come to bed and be a little bit hungry. You ever been there before? Uh, unfortunately, I was probably more times than not. But I also remember times where we didn't have a lot to give, 
but we knew if we could just give what we had, probably something would happen. So this morning, I, I want to talk about um, the idea of being generous while also being broke. Um, have you ever done something in your life out of obligation? Have you ever maybe been a part of something out of obligation? Now, I'll go ahead and, and talk about this just for a second, because while I was in high school, I loved sports. That's what we did. I played on the football team, the basketball team, the baseball team. Sports was our life. But there was also this other side of Jeff Eastham's life that probably none of y'all know about. See, this guy, uh, yeah, I played the sports, but I also was the first chair saxophone player in the concert band at Dixie Heights High School. Holla at your boy. Now, here's the truth. I didn't really enjoy playing the saxophone. I did it out of obligation because it was the next easiest class instead of doing something else. So I, I, out of obligation, I found myself playing the saxophone for four years in high school. Did I get made fun of? Absolutely 100% I did. But did they have worse grades than I did? Yep, they sure did because they weren't in concert band and I was. First chair saxophone. See, it was out of obligation that I played the saxophone. No, I never became a professional saxophone player. No, I never even picked up a saxophone after high school. It's gone. I don't, I might know how to play it, but that was out of obligation. See, if you have to do something uh, out of obligation throughout your whole life, nothing really will end up coming from it. I did that out of obligation, not out of opportunity. But if we choose today to look at this idea that no matter what happens in our life, opportunities can happen, despite if we have a million dollars or despite if we have $10 in the bank account, if we choose to have the mindset from the very beginning that in life, we have to understand that it's not out of obligation that we're giving, and I'm not just talking about money, but it's out of opportunity that we get to help or get to give or get to serve, then that's one way that God looks down. And the Bible says in the, in the scriptures that we just read, God sees that as incredible integrity and he blesses those who bless others. So I just wanna ask before we even get started, what in life or what kind of mindset do we have this morning? Are we living out of obligation or are we living for opportunity? There's a huge difference, but the choice that we have to make really can determine whether our life is going to whether our life is going to end up being blessed or whether our life is going to be uh, something that just causes us to sit on the sideline while other people then get blessed. So let's get let's get into this. You know, at Midtown. What I love about this church, what I love about our team, what I love about everything that's going on is the fact that we have cultural values. And one of our main cultural values is we are generous, period. Do, do we have a million dollars yet? No. Is that something that I'm believing God for? Absolutely. And I'm calling that in every single morning. I have a paper in my office that I have written about nine or 10 different prayer requests that are on that list a couple have happened, but there is one that I'm believing God for. And it's not to know that so that I can get on social media and say, hey, look what I have. It's so that we can get, we, we can have those funds so that we can change one by one a life in St. Louis for Jesus Christ. But what I love about our church is that we just don't have a culture value of being generous. We are generous. Now, I, I, haven't, I haven't talked about this whole lot, and, and quite honestly, it, it makes me a little nervous to talk about money because the minute that um, a pastor or a speaker or somebody starts talking about money is the minute that some people turn them off because they have seen elsewhere how it has been misled, mis misused, or they've been misled by money. But that, that's not going to happen because today we're not just talking about money. We're talking about something and we're talking about the idea of how to become a better person 
yes, and how to still be generous while broke, but it's not just hinging and it's not just all about money. It's about every single aspect of your life, but it also starts with your heart. See, we have the opportunity to change our perspective in life. We have our opportunity to change from obligation to opportunity. See, I want to talk real quick about a, a man named King David. Now, King David, he, he's my boy. He is, he is somebody who I really can relate to with a lot of areas in my life because King David was a guy who uh, messed up, but King David was also a guy that God chose and who wanted to do good. Was he perfect? Mm, no, not at all. In fact, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But see, King David, he was a man of passion. He was a man that ultimately... Uh, we're going that, that he that he's he chose to to give a whole lot um, and he was passionate about a whole lot. See, David and the story of David, really, we can start with his life and where God really started doing some things in his life in first Samuel, because in first Samuel, there was a prophet named for uh, uh, <laughs> first Samuel. There was a there was a prophet uh, that that came by. I'm sorry, a prophet that came by that that said, hey, Jesse, um, I'm going to need you to get all your sons. I'm going to need you to line them up because I'm going to come and I'm going to anoint one of them because they're going to be the next king. So Jesse did just that. He got all seven of his sons, lined them up. It's like the prophet came in. He's playing duck, duck, goose. He tags one. Nope, not him. Tags him. Nope, not him. Tags him. Nope, not him. Tag None of them. And then the prophet was like, um, bro, like I told, I was told to come here, but now none of these jokers are good enough. Like, Mm -mm, see ya, out, gone. You got to have somebody. And then Jesse was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have one more son. He's out in the field. He smells like sheep. He sings songs that nobody really understands what he's talking about. Yeah, I got that, that kid. He's out there. He's the last of all these litter of boys. And yeah, hey, someone call in that. What? Oh yeah, someone call in David, call on him in. And right there in the kitchen, the prophet took some oil dumped it on the little man's head. And right in a moment is when that young man's life changed. He became not just a shepherd, but he was getting ready to, to, to be set up to be the king. You see, uh, what I love about David is, is that he starts his life being overlooked, but then he moves into a place that now he oversees. See, what I love about David is everybody else forgot about him, but God said, they can forget about you, but I'm getting ready to promote you. This morning, I want to tell somebody this, that no matter how lonely you are, your loneliness, that's just a feeling. Because I really believe this, that God has something and he's getting ready to set you up for something that's absolutely amazing. But here's what it's going to take. It's going to take a heart and it's going to take a mindset of saying, look, I don't have to just feel like this for the rest of my life. But today I'm going to choose not out of obligation, not because that guy on the screen said so but because of an opportunity that I have that everybody else overlooks me, now God's getting ready to set me up so that I can oversee something. So this morning, David, uh, he, he was incredible. He was absolutely uh, a man, the Bible says, after God's own heart. See, I like David because he's a real deal, um, also while dealing with real issues. Um, but David also, he, he wavers back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he says so many things. And there's so many things that happens in his life. One minute he's up here. The next minute he's murdered somebody. One minute he's doing great. The next minute he's had an affair. His life is just full of ups and downs. You see, in Psalm 139, it kind of gives an example of how David really is uh, a little bipolar. Because it says this in Psalm 139, starting with verse 17, it says, Oh, how precious also are your thoughts towards me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. But then it kind of like he switches and he goes down and he spirals. Like he just completely loses it. In verse 19, he says, Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore you bloodthirsty men, for they speak against you wickedly. 
Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate them, O Lord, who you hate? And do I uh, not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them as my enemies. But then he switches back because then he says, Oh, but search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. You see, even in David's inconsistencies, even in his ups and downs, the Bible still says that he is a man after God's own heart. He was still after God's own heart. See, there's one constant thing in David's life, and that was that he had a passion for God. He had a passion to see something happen. He had a passion to see the, the, the name of Jesus continued, the name of God continued to be uh, built, the house of God, the church of God, the, the temple. He, he had a passion for that thing to grow. He had a passion and he wanted to continue to build God's house. See, David didn't see obligation. He saw opportunity even in his mistakes, even in his mess ups. See, if we can change the lens from obligation to opportunity, we will understand what it means to be generous even when we're broke. So uh, this, this morning, today, I just want to give us a few quick nuggets on really honestly uh, how to be generous when broke. So point number one is this. We have to fight greed by being generous. To fight greed, we have to be generous. Now, I want to go ahead and just say this, that I know there's people watching today um, that, again, they don't like the topic of, of generous because it equates to giving and which then equivalates to money. And they think that, you know, churches just ask for money. I, I, wanna, I want to ask you a question. When is the last time that you and I that we just simply understood that being generous isn't just talking about giving your money. You can be broke as a joke, but you can love people and be generous with your time. See, if we're not generous with our time and we don't give our time, then we are just greedy people. Because the truth is, here's what greed, the definition of greed is, a selfish and excessive desire for more of something than is needed. So it, it really doesn't even mean money. If we, just sent, if we just can't simply be generous with something like our time or just simply generous with loving other people, then what we're saying is we are a greedy person, that we are a selfish person, that we're, that we're excessively desiring something else. We want somebody to, to love us, to give to us, but we aren't willing to give and be generous to other people of our time, of our money. You see, uh, I, I, I know that some people uh, think, well, yeah, but how, how can I do that? I don't know him. Well, the truth is, um, if you love God, there are no boundaries to who you love on earth because the Bible says that, that God is not, he, he's not a favoritism type God. He, he loves everyone. You know, growing up in Sunday school, we always used to sing that song, red, yellow, black, and white. They are precious in his sight that every single person, despite which background, despite what state, despite what country, despite their past, despite their, their family history, uh, that God loves them. And so one way that we can be generous while being broke is by truly understanding that we can expel the idea of being greedy people by simply being generous with our time and love towards someone else. It's really not too difficult. It's not about money. It's about a heart thing. It's about a heart check. Number two. Now, I want to say the point and then I'll explain what I'm talking about. But understand, number two, we have to know the definition. Go ahead and write it down. That's point number two. Know the definition. K-N-O-W. Know the definition. Now, I know there's a lot of smart people, probably a lot, smart, a lot of smart people who are way smarter than I am watching right now. But one thing that I do know is if I don't know 
the true definition of a word, I'm probably not going to use it because I'm probably going to make myself look like a complete idiot in using it incorrectly. Now, when I say know the definition, see, a lot of people talk about things like, uh, like, like worship. Oh, well, we have to go and we got to worship on Sunday. Well, that's awesome. Go worship on Sunday. Worship online. Worship. That's cool. Worship on Sunday. But what is your worship like on Monday morning? What is your worship like on Wednesday night when it looks like hell is broken out at your home? Your kids are on your nerves. Uh, you don't want to send them back to school because of COVID. But on Thursday, you're ready to send them back to school despite of COVID. What about your worship on Friday when the bars are open? What about worship on Saturday night when things look tough? You see, what is worship? Worship is not a musically inclined moment. Worship is a heart inclined lifestyle. See, worship is something that, that we have to understand the definition. And how in the world, Jeff, does this fall in line with what we're talking about? It falls in line because of this. You can be broke as a joke. You can have zero money. You can have a big goose egg in your bank account right now, but you can also be the most generous worshiper on the face of the planet. Well, Jeff, but if worship's a heart thing and I don't have any money, then how would I really worship because I might be sad? Well, the last time I checked, your worship shouldn't be dictated upon the amount in your bank account. Your worship should be something that you're giving back to God as a sacrifice because he has first given you everything. Well, I have nothing in my bank account. Yeah, but you're breathing today. Yeah, but you, 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 you have breath in your lungs. See, you can be broke, but you can be generous with what you have inside your heart. You have to know the definition of what we're really talking about today. You have to understand the definition in the context of what generous really means. Generous does not mean you have to give money. Now, if you want to give, hey, Midtown will take it. But we are more concerned with your walk with Christ than you thinking we're taking your money. We want you to understand. I want you to understand that your relationship with Jesus and how you worship and how you live and how you're generous with your time with other people, that sometimes is more important because we can get our mind on so many other things. How much money do we owe them? How much money do we owe them? In fact, the Bible says, see, a lot of people say, well, uh, money is evil. No, 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 no. Money is not evil. The love of money is what's evil. The love of, mo uh, the, the, the love of money is what causes us to look at that as a God. See, there's a reason why in the Bible that giving is talked about over 2,000 times monetarily. Why? Because even back then, God understood that today, some of us would make money our God and, un un and others of us would make money something that we use an excuse of why we do and why we don't do something. So today, we have to know the definition of what we're really talking about. We have to understand the definition of being generous is really falls in line with the definition of what worship is because worship is a heart thing. Worship is something that you do as a lifestyle. Giving, being generous is who you are, not what you do. Point number three. Are you hanging in there with me? Point number three is this. To get something in the future we must give something now. So how do you, how do you look at yourself? How, how do you become generous while being broke? Well, you give something now that you're sowing for and planting that something can grow in the future. See, I'm not much of a farm boy. I don't know too much about plants, but I have planted a few gardens here and there. And one thing I know is this, that when you plant just something that looks small, say now, and when you feed that thing, when you have the proper uh, 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 food that's, that, that, is, that is causing that seed to become uh, healthy, that when you water that seed that is so small, you don't understand how anything big can come. When you truly take care of something small now that you're sowing right now, that one small thing 
can grow to become something that feeds hundreds. Jeff, what on earth are you talking about? I'm talking about this. Being a generous person, sowing something now, doing something today that's going to cause great things to happen in your future and for somebody else's future. See, to, to get something in the future, we must give something now. Now, also, I do want to say this. We don't just have to give something now. We have to do something now. See, being generous, again, is not just something that, that, that you give. Being generous is who you are. How generous are you with your time? How generous are you with just simply loving people? Because here's the truth. When my wife and I were at Walmart just last week, we did nothing special. We just simply took about five minutes and just started talking to this young lady named Adele in the middle of Walmart. It's loud. People are going back and forth. Our girls are tired. We're tired. We're ready to get home. But one thing that we knew we had to do and one thing that my wife just stood there and blew my mind, she stood there and she just started having a conversation with this lady like it was uh, like they were best friends, like she had known her forever. But see, my wife was generous with her time and being generous with her, with her love towards this lady who she didn't even know about. And in that one moment, it just changed the entire outcome of what, uh, of what that moment was. It, it was incredible. See, my wife sowed and gave something in that moment that we don't know right now what it may look like, but we also can look forward to one day what it could become. See, what are you being generous with today that you're going to be able to sow something great in the future with? Point number four is this. To be blessed means to be a blessing. See, one thing that I have a pet peeve with is, is a lot of people just want, 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 want from God. And when God doesn't give them that very thing, they get upset with God and they give up on God and they act like everything that's gone wrong in life, it's because it's God's fault because they didn't get what they asked for. Well, but God's also asking, but where is it that you were being generous with what you had that you allowed me to see your true heart and you wanted me to do something because you had integrity inside of you? See, to be blessed means to be a blessing. See, sometimes in life, in order for us to be blessed, in order for us to get the things that, that maybe we sometimes want that maybe necessarily we don't need, but in order to be blessed, there are times in our life that we have to understand that we have to first be generous because to, to, to be blessed means that we have to be a blessing. We have to be able to, to love on people, to take time with people, to develop people, to love people even when we don't like them. Yes, I said it, even when you don't like them, you have to still love them. You have to love people just like you wished, wanted, and waited for someone to love on you. See, being generous you can do it. How do we be generous while being broke? It's called, are you having the heart of God? Just like David, that man may have not had a lot in the beginning, but because he chose to be out in a dirty, nasty field with dirty, stupid sheep, he sang songs that no one really understood. In fact, they were like, that guy, David, he's crazy. But then just years later, because David took the time he was broke. He had nothing. He stunk. He didn't even really have shoes. He was stepping in garbage and crap all the time in the field. But a moment where he was anointed in his daddy's kitchen while all of his other brothers looked on, while all of the other brothers said he couldn't do it, while all the other brothers said that, 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 that he wasn't the one, just weeks or months after that, he went down. He killed a giant that was 10 feet tall. He only had a slingshot and a stone while all of his other brothers were, were just a bunch of babies hiding in a corner. The own, uh, the own general said, hey, why don't you just take my, my armor? And David looked at him and said, listen, man, I just came to deliver some Subway sandwiches. But you guys are afraid. You're the one that's supposed to be fighting. I'm just some crazy, stupid shepherd. But see, David was generous in so many 
ways of his life. He was generous while being broke. But see, God saw his brokenness. God saw his poorness. God saw his 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 his, his uh, life when nothing really seemed great in it. But God also saw his willingness and God saw his availability. So what does it mean and how how do we be generous while being broke? Well, you be available and you be willing and you watch what God will do with the rest. You watch what God will do with the rest. But Jeff, I don't have that much money. It's not about money. You gotta get that out of your head. For any pastor or preacher that's ever taught you that, I don't really agree with that. Why? Because it's not about money. See, I think if churches make it all about money, then money has become their God and they have lost sight of who God is. Meanwhile, they should be getting maybe more, but they can't because their mind is so consumed with the love of money that they're forgetting being generous is something that starts with the heart. So really, you can be generous while being broke. It just starts with what's in your heart. So this morning, here's what I ask. I wanna ask you, do you want to this morning be a generous person? I don't care how much money you have. If you have a million, great. If you have five, awesome. If you have none, no big deal. Why? Because God sees the heart. He doesn't see your checkbook. God wants to know what's on the inside. Are you willing and available to say, you know what, God? I may not have all the money, but what I do have, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you my praise. I'm going to give you my worship. I'm going to give you my love. I'm going to give others uh, time. I'm going to be generous with everything in my life so that you can see how much I truly love your people and how much I truly have integrity, how much I truly understand that God, it's not about money. It's about a generous heart that God can fill up and can do so many great things in and through. So this morning, if you say, you know what? I'm ready to be a true, generous, giving person, even while broke. I want you just to go ahead right now. I want you to text the number on the screen. I want you to text the word fresh to the number on your screen. And here's what's gonna happen. We are gonna walk alongside you because every single one of, of our team members, we have been people who someone else has grabbed and walked alongside us in this journey called life, in this walk with God. And we just want to walk with you. We want to be generous with what God has been generous towards us with. And we want to say, you know what? We got you. We love you. We believe in you. And we know God has got a great plan for you. Let's be generous people this morning. Because if we are generous, then we can heal a land that has gone crazy, but I truly believe if we are generous people in everything that we do, we have the opportunity to change so many lives around us. Listen, God loves you. He needs you. He wants you. He has a plan for you. Let me pray for you this morning. And if you just want a fresh start with him, text the number on your screen. We've got you and we're going to walk alongside you. Lord, thank you so much for everything that you're doing in our life. God, thank you for what you're doing at Midtown, but God, thank you for what you're doing in the hearts and lives of people, God, that we don't even know about. Thank you, God, for the stories, the testimonies, God, that the things that you're doing in people's lives, that, that Father, for some people, it may seem like crazy, 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 crazy stuff, but God, you see it as something that's just building a story and building a testimony for your glory. So God, this morning, I pray, Lord, that we would have the mindset that, God, we wouldn't just do things. We wouldn't just live. We wouldn't just be Christians out of obligation. But, God, we would be people and Christ followers, God, who see opportunity in everything that we do. God, walk with us. Lord, talk to us. Lord, I pray be more real to us today than ever before. Lord, I love you. I praise you. God, I bless families. I bless marriages. I bless people. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just give so much increase so that, God, we can advance your kingdom, so that we can make the name of Jesus famous in every atmosphere, room, and city that we walk in. God, we love you today. We praise you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, and everybody said or typed, amen. Listen, we love you. Uh, we can't wait to see and hear all that God's doing in your life. Go ahead and DM us, email us, visit our website. We love you. Have a great week. See you next week.
Thank you.